All right, everyone. I want to thank you all for joining um, us for this webinar. Uh, it's the Transfer Station Food Scraps Recycling Orientation. And my name is Pippa Bell Ader. I am the team leader for the Zero Food Waste Challenge. And um, this uh, initiative is part of the Zero Food Waste Challenge, which the goal is to decrease Westport's residential food waste by 25% or more. The town believes that um, by providing residents with the opportunity to recycle their food scraps, uh, you're more able to move towards that goal. And uh, with, with her today is myself, Pete Rackwood, Director of Public Works for the Town of Westport. Um, and uh, we're working together to try to make this, uh, make this a go. Thanks, Pete. Um, I wanna, before we get started, I just wanna thank all the organizations that have agreed to uh, join in on this challenge, uh, because without them, we wouldn't be able to get the word out to everyone. So um, why is this so important? Well, you may not realize, but Westport has a goal to go net zero by the year 2050, which means that the community has reduced its impact across energy, water, and waste. And we want all of those um, to be sustainably managed. And we're gonna try to use economically viable, equitable, and environmentally responsible approaches. Oops, sorry. So, again, Pete Rakowicz, Director of Public Works. Um, let's answer why is this important? Um, that is because 20% of Connecticut's residential solid waste is, is food waste. Uh, food waste is heavy. It's expensive to transport because it's heavy. And it's expensive to burn in the waste to energy incinerator because burning water is not very efficient. Um, the waste energy incinerator over in Bridgeport, the Wheelabrator plant, is where all of Westport's solid waste goes. Uh, Westport and much of Connecticut sends all of its trash to incinerators. In fact, right now there are no municipal landfills left in Connecticut. They're all filled up. So it's very important to try to reduce what's going to that burn plant. Back to you, Pippa. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm obviously having dexterity issues. <clears throat> so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Zero Food Waste Challenge. Um, what this initiative is uh, challenging you to do is to look at the food that gets wasted and then figure out how to better plan and prepare meals and preserve food to minimize waste. And then we are encouraging people to compost the food scraps they don't eat. Now you can home compost, uh, which is a great way to uh, uh, get rid of food waste. You can also hire a hauler to pick up food scraps and you can also use starting July 6th the new free transfer station food scraps recycling drop-off area which is why you're here listening to this webinar. So as I said it opens July 6th and it's at the transfer station which is at 300 Sherwood Island connector and the food will be collected at the transfer station and then transported to an industrial composting facility where that then the food scraps will be made into compost. So um, let's just talk a little bit about the requirements to use the transfer station. First of most important, you must be a Westport resident. Um, you have to bring the food scraps to the transfer station in a lidded container. And if you use a bag to dispose of the food scraps, in other words, put the food scraps in a bag, it must be BPI certified compostable. There's a difference between BPI compostable and biodegradable, and we're gonna go over that in a little bit, uh, but it's, it's possible that something that's labeled biodegradable may not actually be compostable. So uh, what you wanna look for is the BPI certified compostable bags. Yeah, there I apologize. Huh? I think there. you went, yeah, there you go. So pretty much everything you need to know about the Food Scraps Recycling Program is in this flyer. And this flyer can be found on the Sustainable Westport website. 
If you click on the tab news and then go down to food scraps recycling, there's a PDF and you can print this out. Um, and also just for your information, you'll be able to access this webinar on the website um, if you want to review anything that we're saying here. Um, and in addition, if you have any questions, feel free to email um, compost at westportct.gov or zero waste at sustainablewestport.org. Uh, one of the main things to remember is when in doubt, throw it out. So we're going to go over this flyer in a little more detail. And um, at this point, I just want to let you know that we will have time at the end for questions. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the question and answer tab, not in the chat tab. Um, and we will get to them towards the end of the webinar. So um, let's talk a little bit about the program. To begin with, residents need to collect food scraps. Now, how you collect your food scraps is really up to you. You do not have to use a starter kit, but we've been advised by the um, Scarsdale Food Scraps Recycling Team, which is our, they're our mentors, that many residents will choose to purchase the starter kit um, because it makes collecting the food scraps a little bit easier. So Earth Place, in coordination with the town, is selling starter kits for $25. Um, and for those who are income eligible, the um, starter kits will be free um, as long as our funding lasts. So the kit consists of a small countertop pail, that's the one with the light green lid, uh, 25-meter-wide compostable bags, and um, a larger transportation uh, bin, which you can use to bring your scraps to the transfer station. Uh, again, the, the starter kit is not required, just helpful, available for $25, free if you're income eligible, and um, we are asking that we um, have one per family at this time because of limited uh, supply. A little word about these BPI certified compostable bags that you keep hearing about. Um, many families are going to choose to line the countertop pail with a bag. To be clear, you can use a paper bag if you want, um, or no bag at all, uh, it's not required. But plastic bags and biodegradable bags that do not have the BPI certified compostable on them are um, not encouraged at the commercial composting facilities that we'll be using in Westport. Um, biodegradable bags may break down into smaller pieces of plastic, uh, but compostable bags are made out of plant material and um, to quote, <laughs> degrade at a rate consistent with, the, uh, with other compostable materials and leave no visible, distinguishable, or toxic residue behind when they break down. Um, in other words, they compost. Uh, and just for your information, BPI stands for Biodegradable Products Institute, um, and they're the institute that sort of certify the authenticity of these um, bags, and we are choosing to go to that high standard. Um, now we're going to watch a video um, made by the Scarsdale Food Scraps Recycling Team. Uh, as I mentioned, we're following that model. Uh, and as you might expect, when a video is made for one town and is being used for another, there are some things that are not completely accurate for Westport, but I'm sure you'll forgive us. Uh, a couple of the things that you'll note, uh, Michelle, the woman speaking, talks about uh, composting tissues. And um, we are not encouraging that, especially in light of the pandemic. We're also discouraging popsicle sticks and um, chopsticks. Uh, you shouldn't worry about putting those into the garbage. Uh, they'll go to an incinerator and they burn well, so that's fine. Uh, the other thing is that Michelle talks about compostable bags. She doesn't mention BPI certified, um, but as I said, we would like to um, adhere to that high standard. And then the last thing is that she talks about the liner bags. Those bags are available for purchase at Earth Place. So now let's watch the video. It is 10 minutes, just to let you know. Hi there, this is 
Michelle Sterling. I live in Scarsdale, New York, and I'm the co-founder of the Scarsdale Food Scrap Recycling Program. Um, you might have seen the earlier video where I talked about the what, how, and why of food scrap recycling. And now I'm going to go through the frequently asked questions with respect to food scrap recycling. So um, one of the things that people often ask is with respect to the food scrap recycling starter kit, which are the bins that you use for the program, do you have to use these bins? Um, most people do use the bins because um, the town, the municipalities buy them in bulk and offer them at cost, so that it's very inexpensive, but you do not have to use these bins. So basically, if you want, you can go to Home Depot and get your orange Home Depot $5 bucket or use a plastic kitty litter bucket, anything with a lid. Um, you can use, you can, instead of using the starter kit countertop pail, you can use a fancy stainless steel one or a ceramic one, anything you want um, to collect your food scraps and to transport them to the food scrap drop off spot is great by us. So no, you do not have to use it in. Um, other people have requested a liner bag for this bin. So just to let you know that um, all the towns doing the program, not only do they offer a compostable liner bag for the countertop pail, but they also offer a compostable liner bag for this bin. So, you know, the way this works is um, the rolls are 25 bags per roll. And so some people actually like to just um, line this bin and they, some people actually go straight in, put their food scraps and, um, and tissues, napkins, and paper towels. So that's, what that's what's accepted. Some people just put them straight into the spin. Um, or some people take all the little bags from this pail and then they put it into here and sort of do a double lining. Um, whatever makes people comfortable is fine by us um, and works. Um, where you get the food scrap recycling starter kit depends upon the town. In Scarsdale, they're for sale both at Village Hall at the Parks Department desk and also at the Scarsdale Recycling Center in the office there. Um, but in every town, um, the town offers the food scrap recycling starter kit. So you can get it, uh, you would just find that out from your town. Um, in terms of purchasing additional compostable bags, we sell them at cost here in Scarsdale, so not making a profit on it. Um, none of the towns are. We buy them at bulk, we get them inexpensively, so it's a lot less expensive than buying them online. It's less than half the price. And um, again, you can get them wherever you get your um, wherever you get your food scrap recycling starter kit. So either, um, and you can get any of the sizes, the liner bags for these or the liner bags for those. Um, but again, you are you are not, if I didn't mention this before, you are not required to use any compostable liner bags. So some people like to go straight into their pail um, and not use any compostable liner bags, and that's totally fine. Um, then you just need to actually clean your pail out, obviously, because you'll have food going directly into it. But it's totally fine not to use a compostable liner bag. And as I'm talking about um, compostable bags, I should just mention that um, what compostable means is plant-based. So if you choose, let's say, to use a bag um, off the internet, um, you just have to make sure that it says COM compostable. <laughs> That's kind of hard right there. And what compostable means is plant-based. So some people will, will see like a, a green biodegradable bag or a bag that says biodegradable or eco-friendly. And a biodegradable bag doesn't actually mean it's a compostable bag because there's a um, biodegradable plastic. And what that means is that it has a chemical in it that makes the plastic break down into tiny little bits. And if any plastic goes in here, that's actually a contaminant. So you can't have um, biodegradable bags. You can only have compostable, or in other words, plant-based bags for this program, if you choose to use a bag. Um, some people like to know, um, is there gonna be any smell or mass? I know I mentioned it in my last um, video, but there's no smell, um, there's no ants, there's no fruit flies. This is a, uh, we've been doing this since 2017 in Scarsdale. It's now 2020, over three years, um, and the program's been growing tremendously every year, which is great, and it's because it is a very clean, neat, easy program. Remember, when you put your food scraps in here, in your kitchen, it's actually no different than putting them in the trash bin in your kitchen. They're still in your kitchen. They're just in a different spot. 
um, and they're in a better spot because they're in a spot where it's gonna going to where they're going to then be recycled. Um, in terms of a lot of people asked, um, what happens to all of this after after it leaves here? So after you bring it to the drop off site, what is what does the town do with it? So it gets picked up by a private carting company of uh, comms with a truck to pick it up and they take it outside of Westchester County to a composting facility because currently our county does not have a composting facility. Hopefully it will soon and the county is looking into that. Um, so it goes to a commercial composting facility where they then turn it into compost. They just mix it with wood chips actually, uh, which is a carbon source. Food scraps are a nitrogen source. They mix it with wood chips and it naturally breaks down and turns into compost and then it gets sold to garden centers, landscapers, farmers. Um, they come with big trucks and they take it um, by the cubic yard and they use it um, They use it to grow more food. So this is really, you know, why we call this closed loop living because the um, food scraps come from the soil, they turn back into soil and, um, and it just sort of continues in a closed loop and it's a waste-free loop. And that really actually is what sustainable living is. Um, just in terms of what the difference is between backyard composting and this kind of composting. So a lot of people do backyard composting. I actually backyard composted for many years. I still do. Um, in a backyard composting system, you put in fruit, uh, fruit and vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, and eggshells. Um, and it works great, it breaks down, it's beautiful compost, and you can use it in your garden. We highly encourage people to back our compost. But this program is different because this program takes all food. So not just fruit and vegetables, uh, and eggshells, but meat, bones, fish, dairy, bread, rice, pasta, um, tissues, napkins, paper towels, bamboo chopsticks, wooden popsicle sticks, parchment paper, wax paper, Anything for nature can go into this program. And the main difference between backyard composting and composting in a commercial facility is actually backyard composting is called cold composting and composting at a commercial composting facility is called hot composting. So your backyard composter generally gets up to about 100 degrees, which is really pretty hot. So it's kind of funny that it's called cold composting, but a commercial composting facility, they get up to about 160 or 170 degrees. So that's why you know, at a commercial composting facility, so where, this, where these traps go, you could put things such as um, meat and bones and fish and dairy, all the things you can't normally put in a backyard system, you can put into this system because at those temperatures, it literally just you know, disintegrates pretty immediately in those piles and turns into compost. Um, so people ask, why should we compost? Um, Obviously, it's very important to take waste out of the waste stream. Um, any waste we can take out of the waste stream is great um, in terms of recycling it into a new product. So there are ways, there are reasons why we should be doing it, which is basically to, um, to recycle and to put our food scraps to its highest purpose. So for example, if you put a bone in here, a bone might, doesn't have nutritional density to us or even peels or rinds. They don't have nutritional density to us, but actually bones and peels and rinds do have nutritional density um, and they can be recycled into food. In fact, we call it the original recycling. Um, there's also reasons why you don't want to be putting food into the waste stream. Um, obviously, you want to eliminate as much as you can from the waste stream. Westchester County, we're a 100% incineration county. Um, food is mostly water, so we don't want to be uh, burning water. It doesn't um, help our incinerators at all. And we want to really just put everything into the most uh, beneficial use that we can. So that's, those are the main whys about why we should be um, composting. And um, that's basically it. Some people ask about other natural products. Like some people say, what about cork? Cork comes from a cork tree. So wine corks, absolutely put them in here. Um, some people ask about rubber bands. So rubber bands, they used to come from a rubber tree plant, right? We all know the song. But uh, now rubber, rubber bands are synthetic. So, um, so rubber bands need to be taken off before they go in here, right? This is only for uh, natural products. But really anything from nature um, can go in here. Some people ask, well, can I just get these bags and 
and put them into my pull-out garbage bin, my pull-out from my cabinet. You can absolutely do that. You can um, line your pull-out with this. Some people put this bin into their pull-out. Some people put this bin into their pull-out. Um, so whatever works for you, works for us, uh, work with it. Even send us uh, suggestions. Some people send us pictures about different configurations in the kitchen, which is always really helpful. Um, any questions, you can email me directly at Michelle Sterling one the number one, at gmail.com or composting at scarzo.com. Mm -hmm. Thanks for trying food scrap recycling. And, um, and that's it. Thank you, Michelle. House can be oh, challenging at times. Even if Sorry. you're a minimalist, you. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to know how to do this. Go to the next one. So, um, just to reiterate. Uh, all food scraps are acceptable. Anything to do with animals, so that's great. Uh, you can put your bones and uh, meat, fish, cheese, oils, fats, eggs, everything like that um, into, sorry, <laughs> the, um, into the, the food scraps container. And as Michelle said, because this is going to a commercial composting facility, it will be heated to very high temperatures. Um, and uh, in, uh, when you do something at home, you, the temperature doesn't really get hot enough for um, animal-based products to degrade. So it's advised that if you're doing home composting, that you keep the animal-based products out of the um, uh, out of the mix. Sorry, Let's see if I can. Start. Oh. Apologies. Okay, on to you, Pete. Oh, you know what, before I get to that, I just want to mention one thing, um, which Pete may go over as well. Uh, we really don't want paper towels and napkins that have any uh, cleaning chemicals on them. Really, we are thinking of paper towels and napkins that have food-based products on them. Thanks. Oops, sorry. So, um, Pete Rackwich again, uh, let's talk about that's a good transition. Uh, any anything with uh, any contaminants on it uh, would would not be something that you'd want to put into this bin. Um, COVID nineteen waste is absolutely in that category because uh, it is not compostable. Um, wipes are absolutely not compostable. So when in doubt, throw it out. If you do have questions, there's an email address that Pippa mentioned earlier. Uh, I believe it's composting at sustainablewestport.org. So you can always email a question, but you know, if, if you have a doubt about it, don't put it in the bin, just put it in the trash. Um, we see a lot of uh, we see a lot of masks and and wipes and gloves and things in the gutters these days with the COVID-19 crisis. So we really don't want those in in the food waste because they're not food. Um, so that's just to try to reiterate that that um, I know um, people may not may not realize that to begin with, but uh, we want to sort of drive that point home. Okay. Uh, in addition, we don't want coffee pods, rubber bands, stickers that come on not only bananas but oranges and apples and and all sorts of other fruit products, or um, or twist ties. Uh, so these things that come along with your your produce, um, you know, if they if they look like trash, they probably are trash. So again, when in doubt, throw it out. Um, absolutely not the uh, not the coffee cups. And then finally, um, pet waste is not desirable to have in this uh, in this waste stream. Um, absolutely, you know, will will not be accepted. So. Do not throw food wa uh, pet waste into into the, the stream. And um, this uh, this this sign right here is going to be very large at the uh, drop off center. So if you're looking for where the where the location is, uh, it's going to be right 
right underneath this sign. Um, it's probably about a six foot by four foot sign erected uh, as you come into the transfer station. If anybody's familiar with that, uh, after, after you get by the scale house, you come around and the very, very first station that's going to be in the, in the drop-off area is, is the food waste drop-off area. Now, with the current setup with the COVID-19 pandemic going on, we are exercising uh, social distancing, so we are blocking off every other spot, uh, and you will be directed to a spot. So um, wherever the spot you're directed to is, you may end up having to walk over to the, uh, to the area. Um, when you're, let's see, you know, the drop-off process, uh, well, just any, any drop-off process at the transfer station is you have to wear a face mask. You have to be a, uh, a, a Westport resident. You're going to back your car into the designated spot, bring your food scraps in a lidded container. It doesn't have to be the kit, but we do want to have a lid on it. And then we're going to have a large tote that's depicted in this slide over on the right-hand side. Um, there's going to be a line on the inside of that tote that, uh, that we're going to try to only lift them up, uh, fill them up about two thirds because they do get pretty heavy. But there will be a number of volunteers on most of the time that will help direct you if you have any questions. Um, one important thing is if you do buy the kit, uh, better to, to carry the, the kit because it's going to be heavy. Uh, by the small handle, as depicted in the photo, than not the not the long black one because that's a little bit weaker, and that's really there to um, secure the lid down. Um, let's see. If you have any questions, you can email zero waste at sustainablewestport.org or compost at westportct.gov. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke last time. Um, there will be volunteers in yellow vests at the transfer station. Bear in mind, their job is just to answer questions and show you where to dump the food scraps in the right container. Um, they will have the knowledge to answer your questions, um, and they've been instructed to move things along as quickly as possible because on the weekends, we do have a very small transfer station and long lines. So they're gonna to try to assist everybody in just getting in, getting out and, and getting done with it. Um, uh, so uh, I know this is not directly related to the um, transfer station food scraps recycling area, but I know a lot of West Borders are looking for ways to help um, their uh, fellow uh, Connecticut residents. Uh, so I just wanted to bring it to your attention that we do have a big issue with food insecurity, just two towns over, over 25% of Bridgeport residents have to choose between food and other essentials. Um, and I think that number has gotten much worse uh, since the pandemic. So I just wanted to let you know, I'm sorry, that there are opportunities. You can go to Food Rescue US and there's an app that you can download and uh, you can choose to help uh, transport surplus food from one designated area, such as a supermarket or a school or a restaurant and bring it to a food center. Um, and I like this program because you can sign up to do a, a shift uh, at your convenience. You don't have to commit to a, a weekly uh, visit or whatever, um, although you can if you want to. Um, and another program that I'm very excited about is uh, new this year, thanks to Christ and Holy Trinity Church and the Westport Community Gardeners. Uh, you can, if you grow food in your garden, uh, you can bring surplus food or even you can grow a row for uh, people who have food insecurity. Um, and uh, it will get, if you bring it, drop it off at Christ and Holy Trinity between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., seven days a week, uh, then it will get brought to a feed center in Bridgeport where the food will be distributed or um, it might actually be made into meals that will then be distributed um, all for free um, to Bridgeport residents. So now we have time for some questions. And let's see, I have to, I'm not seeing the questions, so I may have to ask Jen to read the questions, if that's okay. I've got, I've got them here. Oh, um, 
I can I can go through uh, the first couple uh, have already been answered, but uh, I'm going to read them anyway. Um, the first one is, are coffee filters okay? And the answer is absolutely yes. Coffee filters filled with coffee are fine. <laughs> to go, go right in there. Um, so you can just dump your whole coffee filter right into the compost. And I will say that um, it has come to my attention that some tea bags, especially the ones look, that look like little pyramids, are actually not made out of um, uh, plant-based material and they may be plastic and those are not good for the composting. So we'll go on to the second question, which is, will you have lawn signs available so that we can promote this program in our neighborhoods? Um, right now, we don't have lawn signs, but that's a good idea. Um, we'll consider it for sure. Uh, I think we might have to check a little bit with planning and zoning before we <laughs> promote that, but uh, I, I think that's, a, that's a, something that we should really consider because that would be a good way to get the word out. Um, let's go to the third question, and that is, are real corks okay to compost in Westport? And then what about butcher paper um, and raw sugar packets if they're not coated? Um, Pippa, do you want to answer that? <laughs> Um, raw corks are definitely allowable. Just be careful because there are plenty of corks that are no longer um, uh, natural, they're synthetic, so don't put those in. That would be a big problem. Um, the sugar packets, I think that would be fine. And what was the last one? Sorry. Well, the sugar packets, um, if, they, if they're coated or if they appear to be coated, then yeah, absolutely not. not. So this, this question really falls under the rule that when in doubt, throw it out. Um, I know that on the Scarsdale video, they said that wax paper was okay, but we're gonna discourage that. Uh, and I think butcher paper is quite a bit like that. It's got a coating on it. So anything that's got a coating on it, just assume that that's not natural. And, and I would say the answer is no. If they're not coated, uh, and it's obvious that they're not coated, then, uh, then you could do that. But I, I think, uh, like I said, when, it, when in doubt, throw it out. Um, that that uh, reminds me that we are not encouraging people uh, to put any compostable um, uh, foodware products into this uh, container. For instance, sometimes you get compostable plates and they say compostable cups. Uh, it's just that there's the opportunity for making a mistake is too great. So at this time, we are, we are discouraging people from putting compostable uh, products into the, uh, the food scraps recycling. We're really sticking to food at this point. Okay, uh, next question is, are fruit, peel, fruit peels are not okay? Uh, uh, but that's not right. The fruit peels are definitely okay. Banana peels, apple peels, orange peels, fine. The only thing we ask is if it came from the store and it still has the uh, uh, little sticker on it, either a price sticker or SKU sticker, take the sticker off because that's, that's a contaminant. That's not natural material. So. You know, before you peel the banana, just take the Chiquita sticker off and, and, um, and then, then it's perfectly acceptable to go in. In fact, it's very good for the compost. Um, the next question is, who do you contact for the kit? And I think that uh, I'm going to throw that to Kit Pippa because she's got it memorized. Yeah, at this time, um, because of the pandemic, uh, EarthPlace is still partnering with us, but it's more difficult to get into the building. In fact, the building is not at open. So we are asking that you email zero waste at sustainablewestport.org, or you can email compost at westportct.gov. And that email will get to the Zero Food Waste Challenge team, and you'll be contacted by a team member who will actually, at this time, deliver the um, composting, I mean, the starter kit to your home. And then the last question, this is uh, the last question I have on here. This is very important. Are pizza boxes okay? Um, no, pizza boxes are not okay. Um, 
pizza boxes have been the uh, subject of recycling uh, and the what's in what's out campaign but that does not equate with the composting um, they, they they may be able to go into the recycling if they don't have grease on them if they're clean uh, but uh, again comes right back down to when in doubt throw it out if it's not if it's not a natural material, if it's not a vegetable material, then uh, no, you don't want it. You definitely don't want to put it into the the food waste bin. Is that it for questions? That's all I have on the Q and A right now. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. I just want to thank everyone for participating for the um, Westport Library um, and Earthplace for co-sponsoring this. Uh, for Pete Brakovich from the Department of Public Works and also um, for my team uh, who has uh, played a very uh, integral role in getting us as far as we've gone. Thank you so much.